Typically, the pattern that every operator goes through is they release overpowered and then get nerfed over time. Lion, Ella, and Malusi are all great examples of this. However, the operator I'll be talking about today broke this rule. They released overpowered and they continue to be a force to be reckoned with today. So follow me as I tell the story of the operator who managed to stay at the top for four whole years. For the purpose of today's video, we must go back to year three, season two, also known as Operation Parabellum. This operation just so happens to be my favorite operation of all time. It brought us great balancing changes with Clubhouse rework and the new map Villa. Also, the seasonal weapon skins were pretty fire, which is a plus. But what we are here for today is the new operators. Parabellum brought us Alibi and Maestro, both of which are really good operators by today's standards. But one operator outclassed the other and that operator just so happens to be Maestro. Maestro's gadget is the Evil Eye, which is a bulletproof camera with a built-in laser that deals damage to attackers and their gadgets. They also had the benefit of being stronger on release since melees didn't shatter their glass. But by far the most busted part about Maestro was his gun, the Alda 556. This thing on release was extremely busted. It had the ACOG, way less recoil, and an extremely tight hip fire spread that allowed you to get easy kills without even scoping. I would argue that the Alda was the most busted gun to ever be added to the game. More broken than Ella's Scorpion. On top of his great gadget and overpowered gun, he also brought a secondary shotgun to make rotates and amazing secondary gadget options. There really weren't any holes in Maestro's arsenal, and upon release, he instantly became meta. So much so that an entire meta was formed called the Intel meta. This meta revolved around bringing operators like Valk, Echo, and even Maestro every round to get as much intel as possible. Also, since bulletproof cameras were introduced in the same season, it made this meta even crazier. As for the attacking side of things, the intel meta meant that most of the round was spent dealing with defender intel. The meta resulted in operators like IQ actually getting picked to counter it all. However, everyone knew that something was going to have to be done. Maestro was just simply too strong. And well, Ubisoft would begin to address just that in the following operation, Grim Sky. Operation Grim Sky was an overall mediocre operation. It brought us one game-changing operator in the form of Maverick, but it gave us Clash, who to this day is considered to be one of the worst operators. Also, this operation brought us the map rework for Hereford Base, which completely removed all of the fun aspects and casual, while still making it a bad map for ranked. But none of that matters, because what we are here for today is the balancing changes, specifically the one targeted directly at Maestro. In Grim Sky, they decided to nerf Maestro's Alda's hipfire drastically. Instead of it being a hipfire machine like it was before, it was now going to have recoil comparable to other LMGs in the game. This change was wanted by most of the community since launch, and it only made sense. There was no reason his hipfire should have been that tight in the first place. However, the uses of his hipfire were quite uncommon, and the nerf really wouldn't affect him that much overall. He would continue to be a force to be reckoned with for the rest of the year, with Intel meta still going strong. So Ubisoft would decide to go up to bat once again, hitting Maestro with another nerf in year 4 season 1, also known as Operation Burnt Horizon. Operation Burnt Horizon was an amazing operation. We saw the introduction of Mozzie and Gridlock to the R6 roster, and we got the new map Outback, which may not have been the best map in the game, but it was all right. Obviously though, we are here for Maestro's nerf. This operation made it possible for Thatcher's EMPs and Twitch's shock drones to force the Evil Eyes glass open. This allowed the attackers with a good use of their EMPs to destroy Maestro's Evil Eyes without using explosives. This was a huge nerf to Maestro. He was now able to be countered by two of the most picked attackers in the game. Now you may be thinking that this would hurt Maestro's pick rate drastically. Well, it was quite the contrary. His pick rate actually went up by a whopping 13% after this change. So it's safe to say that Maestro remained unfazed by this change and his fellow Intel operators were doing even better. So it didn't look like the Intel meta was going to be going anywhere anytime soon. However, a change that was about to come to Maestro would hurt his pick rate for good. That change would come in year four season five, also known as Operation Shifting Tides. Operation Shifting Tides was another amazing operation to come to Rainbow Six Siege. We got Wamai, a game-changing defender, and Kali, who brought an interesting weapon to Team Rainbow. We also got the Theme Park map rework, which made the map much more playable, with it today being played consistently in Pro League. We also got some great balancing changes in the form of the limb penetration system and the Jackal rework. But the change that would affect Maestro forever also came in this patch, and that was the removal of his ACOG. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Beast, how could a site affect an operator's pick rate that drastically? Well, I'm just as confused as you are. But Maestro's pick rate never recovered from this nerf, which I find quite interesting. I think it's down to the LMG benefiting drastically from it. And without the ACOG, he was now one of the only three armors in the game without one. But honestly, I didn't remember the drop being this drastic. However, Ubisoft would come back with a change two years later that would act as the nail in the coffin for Maestro's pick rate, which would cause it to then spiral out of control. 
That change would come in year six, season two, AKA Operation North Star. Operation North Star was a really mediocre operation at best. This operation introduced Thunderbird as our new operator and the map rework for Favilla. Obviously, Favilla was hated by most of the community, so much so that it would get removed from ranked soon after its release. As for Thunderbird, she was an all right operator, but she never became meta and she never had any sort of impact on the game. But the best parts of this operation was the balancing changes. We saw the introduction of the Malusi rework, which made her way more manageable to go against. And we saw the smoke rework, which made his smokes more consistent. But the change we are here for today is the Shattered Glass rework. This change made Mira's windows at Maestro's Evil Eyes meleeable. When meleeed, the glass on their gadgets would shatter, impairing their visibility. This hurt Maestro a lot. It forced him to place his gadgets in areas where they couldn't be meleeed, which were few and far between. This change single-handedly made him more niche and situational, which resulted in his pick rate dropping significantly. He never recovered from it either, with his pick rate today still being just as bad. However, Ubisoft would attempt to buff him in a future operation in hopes that it would recover his pick rate. That buff would come in Operation High Caliber. Operation High Caliber was another operation in a trend of mediocre operation. It brought us Thorn, who was considered to be one of the worst trap operators in the game, and we got the Outback rework, which didn't solve any of the problems with the original. But this operation did bring a great quality of life change to Maestro, that being the ability for other defenders to rotate Maestro's cameras. If you didn't know, Maestro's cams used to only be rotatable by Maestro while he was alive. But this change got rid of that, making it possible for dead defenders to move his cameras. This was a really nice change. It allowed Maestro cameras to still provide some utility as an actual camera after he died. But this barely affected his pick rate somehow. And as of the most recent operator statistics, Maestro is still underutilized. Now you may be thinking to yourself, how is Maestro still overpowered as you said in the title? Well, Maestro's Alda is still by far the most powerful weapon on the defensive side, and the only thing that has happened to it is it's lost its ACOG. It still has an absolutely stupid fire rate with good damage and low recoil. There's really no downside to it. Also, I still think Maestro's gadget is top tier. People really do sleep on how strong his evil eyes are for denying the plant. They can also function as bulletproof cameras, like I said earlier, which can give some great intel. If you ask me, Maestro is almost just as strong as he used to be, just the game's meta has moved on without him. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I make Rainbow Six Siege content just like this twice a week. So make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you don't miss the next upload. If you want to watch another video just like this one, a video will be popping up on your screen right now where I talk about another operator that was absolutely insane on release. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.